fans out there, we have a special Metal Gear Solid reunion just for you. <laughs> we have brought in 10 of the players, voice actors, performers, actors, however you want to word them, just amazing human beings that have brought characters to life that we know you all love and cherish. So we are going to spend the next hour or so talking to them, getting a little bit behind the scenes maybe, and some of your questions answered. Uh, we are going to start out right away by saying hello and thank you, everybody, for joining us for this next hour. <laughs> hello. Hey. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey. 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 Thank you for hello. coming. As you can see, <laughs> we've got 10 people who all love each other. So we're going to try to keep this controlled by doing questions aimed at everybody. Uh, just real quick around the horn, we have Cam Clark. We have Paul Eiding. We have Josh Keaton. We have Laurie Allen. We have Debbie Mae West. Robin Atkin Downs, Tasia Valenza, Christopher Randolph, Jennifer Hale, and David Hader. We are, I am Jeff Zanini, your host. Snake. I feel like we're on Hollywood Squares. Which is <laughs> no. yeah. I am Jeff. Can I be Paul Lind on the Hollywood Squares? <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, be okay. going really. I'll have to fight I'm going to be Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> Snake. Maybe they we're West aging ourselves because a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people won't know Hollywood Squares as, as, no. unless it's on Hulu or something. <laughs> Hold on. I guess that would make us the Hollywood Squares. All right, so we're gonna start out. We'll get it warmed up with just uh, everyone. If you want to give a quick little note, what we're looking at now is how do you feel voices in video games since 1998 has changed? Better, worse, your opinion in general. Just a quick little synopsis. We don't have to go into detail. <laughs> I'm throwing that out there to start the day. Uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll jump in. Uh, when we first did this, um, Snake was pixelated and you couldn't really see his face. And um, the, the dialogue of it was so unusual. Um, that I think it, it had a little more of a cartoon feel to it. And then as games have gotten hyper-realistic, I think the acting uh, has done the same. And, and uh, you get amazing characterizations, you get real worlds that you can dive into. And I think that that's what we try to do as a, as a Metal Gear family as the games got, got more and more realistic. Yes. Yeah, what do you want, Liquid? Well, can I, can I speak, dear brother? Give me yeah, just one ahead. minute, ever. What the hell? I think before this was the first game that I worked on that was more than a shooter game. Uh, mm. In the early games, we said each line about 10 different ways, <laughs> depending on how they played. That's one kill, three misses, you know, and just every line that many times. Mm. And there was no real connection. And this is the first time where there was backstory. And uh, for me anyway, I went, oh, this is like an acting job. So that was great. <laughs> and I think I, as I understand it, you know, in terms of the bat, you know, the villains were just one note and Sniper Wolf, Sniper Wolf, because, you know, they, she did give the backstory that her scene, even though she was, you know, when she was killed, that death scene was uh, something that emotionally connected the players to, to love somebody that they didn't really want to love. So that it really, it really showed the humanity in, in, in games. And of course that's evolved continuously, but maybe this was one of the, the first games that really showed that dynamic of the multi-level uh, characters as opposed to these caricatures that made you feel for the characters and got you involved in the game as opposed to just the adrenaline of the killing and the, you know, the winning. It was more that multi-dimensional that you, you didn't want her to die, but you wanted her to die and, and you know, and all the different characters that you cared about them. And that's, that's great storytelling. Yeah, I mean, as the resolution of the graphics uh, got better and better, uh, I mean, the, the resolution of the storytelling kind of followed suit. I mean, at first, when you first started out, you know, I, I'm sure everybody remembers how, um, what, what David was saying, how, or was it, what, uh, I can't remember if it was David or Cam that was saying that, you said it like 10 different ways. And mm -hmm. really, you just kind of, everything was an archetype. Everything was basically like, this is the cocky guy. This is the bad guy. This is the good guy. And then as you started having more cinema sequences that started going into places, you could actually have stories with a background. You could actually have more depth to the characters. And now that you have performance capture, I mean, it's literally your full body performance. It's not just your voice anymore. It's oh, your so voice. It sometimes it's your face and yeah. your voice and your body actions that they're really just putting a skin over. 
And, uh, and I think the and active process is so much better too. Uh, yeah. You know, where you get to work actually opposite the actor that you're working with and hear face what they say. So things exactly. match, you know, because uh, sometimes in the past. I remember ahead, the first guys. time the mocap was presented to all of us as this is now a new phase of the games. And I went, you mean memorize lines? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. I, can't, I can't audition for that. No. What's so interesting to me too, is this is one of the first games and still one of the very few that has capitalized on that secret sauce of when we all get to be together. Yes. You know, like, yeah. We were together recording yes. these, and that happened right. every one of these. And that is the secret untapped sauce that, like, Josh, yeah. you and I worked together last year on a, on a recap game. And, yeah. and that, you know, we got to, to get to interact with you, to get to like play off of you. And, and when we got to work together in the same room, it was just, oh my God, it was like delicious. Yes. That yeah. happens so rarely that. in a video yes. game. Still. Yeah. Still. yeah. 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 When I started, animation, uh, it's much better. In the animated series, they tend to do it. But in video games, the actors are really, you get your lines, you, you, you get, go in, you're directed three different ways to say it. Yeah, we like it, move on. And so you're missing that component of the relationship, of the reaction to each other. And for them to do that so far back, to have that foresight... Mm -hmm. Is, is really something you don't even think about. But but now that you point that out, because there's been very few games that I've worked on since that have done that, maybe one or two out of many, many games. And I'm sure you could attest to that. About 5%. How, how often we get a chance to do that. It's mostly singular. And no matter how great you are as an actor, if you don't have the context of the relationship of like, maybe you said the line a little bit differently and that you had reacted or you're emotionally were connected in that moment, um, you're not going to give the same performance. And so that's well, an incredible. And I think it goes to what Josh was saying a minute ago, which is specificity. You know, the generalized, generalized archetypes and stuff, you're just playing an idea. When you get those specifics, you're playing a human being with a soul, a life, a backstory and everything else. And then when you're playing in a scene with someone else, I'm, I don't have to just work off my imagination of what happened on the other side. I've got that extra chemical and spirit and soul shot of another human being's actual being in that scene with me. And it just drives the level straight up. Yeah. yeah it forces you to really have to rely on your characterization and, and, and trust in it because you're going to be given stuff that you wouldn't have been able to game out and foresee um, when you were rehearsing. And, yeah. and as long as you trust in your character, you know, that's when you start getting the magic moments. It's more real life. It's more like real life. Yeah. I say I've basically spent many years trying to look exactly like that. <laughs> uh, no, I wish I could get the background. I think a lot of us have had the good fortune of having these characters sort of live and breathe in us for a while. And that's very unusual too, right? Like we don't get to just, it's not a one hit wonder. It's this beautiful legacy. I'm sure all of us have gotten, you know, tweets and reach outs. And when we do get to be in person, which we will be again, um, you know, the people are just like, thank you. Like I get things like the boss should, you know, the boss should run in 2024 for president. I'm like, I, I, I wish she would too. Yeah. Loyal to the end, but uh, I think that's ex so extraordinary. What what folks have said is that we're in there with each other, and then also if you have a good voice director, it's a little tangent on the question, right, that Jeff had asked. But to have a good uh, for, for us for Chris Zimmerman, Salter, Chris and you, Zimmerman. You, just like you love him, you love him, you love him. He needs to kill you. He needs to kill you. You're like, Wah! you know, you leave the session like exhausted, but it's a good thing because well, and that's I, I think that's the piece that people don't always think about is these. The people you don't see, the people you don't know about. I mean, Chris alone is responsible for the tone of much of modern gaming. I agree. Yes. And has set the tone of much of modern pop culture. And, and people don't know yeah. her name. And I'm like, that's nuts. Like all the directors we have out in this industry who are phenomenal. You know, and the writers and the producers and the creators who really launched an entire cultural movement. Yep. You know? Right. And, but, uh, you know, all of that really changed because of Kojima and Metal Gear. I mean, I, I've always, I, I can't think of anything that existed before Metal Gear 1 that it wasn't. took all of those components and, and put it together, you know. It was just um, wonderful. I mean, do you guys remember being in the studio and seeing some of it? I was like, oh, you well, know. I remember being, we were in a house the first time they recorded it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, we were in a house. Yeah, we were in a house. Yeah. 
Uh, the interesting tone, the cultural tone, and oh, Jeff, let Dave in again. Um, the cultural tone of yeah, um, Dave left. We so need to get him. Yeah, back. He had a tech. Dave, Dave was bored. He didn't want to participate. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go. Oh, bring him he back. Had a mission. He, he had was a ejected by tech. Snake. We we're all going to answer it. Snake. Come Come out out here. Here. Snake. I think what's All right. Kevin well, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the individual questions. Uh, <laughs> I got we don't question. have David with us at the moment, but he'll be right back. I'm the, they're all in order on my screen, so I'm just gonna go down this so that way I don't miss anybody. Are there uh, prizes if we get it right? Yes, <laughs> yes. you will get high fives. More, and more on the back prizes. You're gonna get a nice care package in the mail from my mom. Uh, we're gonna go to the first question with Robin. Robin, let's see. I got a couple to choose. Ha ha, you're first. Ha ha. Robin, Robin gets the first one now. I was going to use Dave, but he's not here. So let me just get this out of the way. You played me like a damn fiddle. That was the first question. I bet it was. Let's talk about they played us like a damn fiddle. You did that in the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sean Connery. Any new additions? That would have been. I, I, I. That wasn't it. Uh, Um. You know, it's kind of funny that you bring up that line because we talk about working together. And here's an example where uh, in, in that particular line, I was working with uh, Kiefer, but he was not in the studio at the time. And he's very soft spoken, you know, anything that you see him in. And uh, I think Chris had told me that, you know, there's the helicopter noise and all this stuff's going on. So we did all these levels of it. Some of them were intimate. And the one that they ended up choosing was a, they played me like a damn fiddle. It was so projected and so over the top that it became this meme online. But um, if, if I was able to be, uh, you know, have been in the room with Kiefer when I was recording it, then obviously it would have been a lot less. But hey, what the hell? That, that line stuck out there. <laughs> the, other, the other, on top of that one was, one of your greatest speeches is the, why are we still here? <laughs> Can you still pull it off? Is what they asked. Well, you know, I think that's a that's a um, a good example of uh, Chris Zimmerman's direction. You know, not only did she keep us all on track when we had to say the line ten, fifteen times, and and kept it urgent, um, she also had a way of just kind of honing in uh, the performance. And you know, I've got to say, uh, in in Peace Walker. And the later games, I mean, all of them, I mean, all the writing was so great. And that particular speech was uh, filled with so much passion and, uh, you know, where cause uh, was at at that point. I mean, it was just, um, you know, really fun material to work with and especially work with uh, the darker side of uh, cause in the later games. All right. Thank you. Moving yeah. on to Debbie. Hello. Let's see. For Debbie, we have... Did you change the way you voice Meryl due to her transformation from Metal Gear Solid 1 to Metal Gear Solid 4? Only because I got old. <laughs> <laughs> got to give no. up smoking, girl. <laughs> I don't smoke. Uh, no, I, I don't think that I thought of it that way. I was just so excited to be in the studio with David again. And I was it, I just finding that relationship and so i wasn't really thinking about my voice when i was uh voicing meryl ever she really was me i didn't you know i wasn't for me she, i meryl's just my voice i didn't really put anything on except for the, my badassery it also oh, oh, and, oh. The, and the rooster <laughs> wow. badassery he was <laughs> saluting your badassery how is johnny doing <laughs> an angel got his wings <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, at Kauai, Debbie's in Kauai, by the way, and I only know this because when I went there to visit with my family, there's a ton of wild roosters that get to roam the <laughs> island and you can hear them whether you're in a hotel or not uh, at any time of the day. So I, I'm imagining that they're friends of yours. That they, get roam, <laughs> that they get to roam the island. They, they broke free during a hurricane many years ago 
And so they're just procreating and there are literally roosters uh, and they don't know when sunrise is, by the way. They only, they, they're constantly <laughs> screaming. Right. Yeah. Just a minute to my dogs, the rescue dogs are going to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? right. Aren't there, aren't there, aren't there aren't Meryl's voice as a rooster. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> filmed some roosters doing it last week and and the uh the after the rooster well a rooster and a chicken and after he was done he literally limped away <laughs> hilarious this was definitely debbie. a tangent i'm sorry i took us on a tangent that's all right debbie they also asked how is johnny doing he's doing great he's coming over right now to to cock a doodle do me um you know johnny i'm sorry what <laughs> I, I, I was that. Now, yeah. you know, Johnny was a farter, and that was really uh, such um, amazing Japanese humor. And I love fart jokes. I love butt humor. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that they chose to have me marry Johnny. But I did go back and watch some of our scenes, and they were hot. When I was dying and he was... Um, giving me mouth to mouth. And uh, that was that, that was a pretty hot scene. And I just wonder, wonder where he is. Where's Johnny gone? <laughs> um, I, I, he's fine. He's crowing away. Shut the fuck he up. Is. <laughs> the worst. He's like, Meryl, get over here. That's how Johnny is. Excellent. Well, it's funny. It's a funny segue because the next, the, literally the next little comment was, does it still make you smile that you married the guy you knocked out at your escape from the cell on Shadow Moses Island? Well, our wedding was cute and I've never been married. So it was really the only um, depict depiction of me being married on planet Earth was marrying Johnny in Metal Gear. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really appreciative of that and also happy that it was just in a video game. <laughs> All right. Thank you very, thank you very much. Mo moving on. The next question is for Jennifer Hale. Yes, sir. Naomi had a long pause between Metal Gear Solid One and Four. Mm -hmm. Did you do any? Did you do anything different voicing her, or was it difficult to get back into her shoes? No, it was um, it was pretty straightforward. She's not too far from my own voice print, and I was involved in. Metal Gear 2, but as a different character. So I was still in the in the universe and in the zone. Um, so yeah, no, she comes pretty naturally to me. Yeah. Did she have a crush on Snake? Nick? Who does? Yeah. She doesn't have one. everybody. <laughs> there are larger yeah, issues yeah. at stake. <laughs> All right. It says now also you voice so many iconic characters over the years, but between the two, Naomi Hunter and Female Shepherd. No. Who is your favorite? Oh. oh. Here's my answer. Don't make me pick. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed, before we leave you, a very important question. I don't know if the other women want to pipe in at the end of your response. As a woman who voiced so many amazing female characters, do you feel that the women are properly represented in video games today? Well... <laughs> I'm like, do you really want to go down that road? Um, <laughs> women are not properly represented. <laughs> yeah, look, here's the deal. Women are not properly represented in the world. I'm excited to see how much better represented we are in games than we used to be. I choose not to look back, but to look forward. I choose not to dwell on what isn't there, but what is, and to build on that. And that's going really well right now. Fantastic answer. I, I, right, I feel very much like women, don't you guys agree, guys and gals, that in this particular game, I feel quite, you know, well represented as a female. So it's such a template. It's such an example of how, um, how these characters are so complex and they love each other and they have love affairs and they die and they come back. But um, I, I absolutely agree that at going forward, you know, writers have such opportunities for all sorts of inclusivity. And so I'm just excited to see what you know, what comes out of, you know, this game is, has just set in, you know, a, a really high bar. So even though it's taken a bit, we'll catch up to all the good female stuff. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Next question is for Christopher. Christopher. Yes. David. <laughs> Do you still know what the weak spot of Metal Gear REX is? <laughs> yes, I do, but I'm not going to tell you. 
<laughs> you have to figure it out. You know, when <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's very interesting. I, uh, I play these games sometimes and I'm terrible at it. <laughs> and uh, when the first game came out, I went and bought myself a PlayStation and I was, I couldn't get to the point where Otacon appears. I kept getting killed and having to go back. Uh, and I was just trying to get to see my own work, um, uh, which, you know, is it an extraordinary metaphor for being an actor where you just, you keep getting killed before you can actually get to work. <laughs> um, so I, at the time, I actually went out and bought a cheater's book expressly because I had to, I really wanted to see how what I had done came out. Um, and of course, then playing through the game with the cheaters book, I, I couldn't help uh, continuing to look. Um, and I think I still have the book somewhere. So yes, I know, I know where the weak spot is, but I'm not gonna right. tell uh, following with that is uh, you're you're quite the Black Widow in the Metal Gear Solid series. First Sniper Wolf, then his sister Emma, and then Naomi. Yeah. Seems like all the women that you love die in your presence. Is Otacon cursed? <laughs> Can love bloom on a battlefield? Can love. Um, I don't know if he's cursed. Uh, um, but but certainly he's he's had a really a string of really bad luck with uh, with women. Is he ever going to um, date another woman? Well, um, hopefully we'll all have the opportunity to find out at some point. Um, uh, you know, he in all fairness, he comes from a pretty lousy family background, uh, so he doesn't have great modeling in terms of. He her. never had any therapy to get to family of and, origin. And he never had the therapy or the. Not a um, on the other hand, uh, uh, you know, having all, all your all your girlfriends die is um, it's really not his fault. So you know, I I would like to see I would like to have Otacon, uh wind up happy and uh, and in a relationship with someone other than the circumstance. Me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, next question for David. Yeah, yeah. As Here you can are. imagine, we've got I've a few. Waiting. We've got a few for you, so I'll I'll try and throw out a few at a time, just to if you can get them. If they're longer, we'll move on. But I'll just run right from the top. Snake's grumpy yeah. voice is probably one of the most iconic things about the character. How did you come up with the voice? <laughs> uh, well, the the voice. Um, I I initially auditioned with this voice, which is my voice. Uh, but I was young uh, at the time. I, I'm no longer young. And um, I started reading the script and he had already been retired and he was already bitter and didn't want to come back. And he was just over it all. And it felt like he was older than me and bitterer than me. And, and that's kind of where it came from. It was, he was already tired of being called a legend and I, I had never been called a legend yet. So um, that has since been rectified. Of this course, yeah. <laughs> finally, it took mm -hmm. forever. All right. Uh, yeah. More than rectified. Yeah. You are Metal, yeah. Gear, Metal Gear Solid is one, still one of the biggest franchises in gaming. When did you start okay. noticing the game and your popularity? Was it Metal Gear Solid 2 or later? Oh, no. Uh, I knew when we were recording Metal Gear 1 that it was going to be a huge push by Sony, that Mr. Kojima was creating something that was so cinematic and new. I knew it was going to be a big game. I, I didn't know we'd be talking about it 22 years later, intermittently. Um, but uh, as and it was these sort of the early days of social media. But I was pretty popular uh, from the time it came out. I mean, it it really made a big splash. And by the time Metal Gear Two was coming around, I was very lucky. I, I, in the meantime, I had written uh, X Men. And so I had this another enormous break. And so, uh, so that was a good time for me. I bought a port. <laughs> oh, well, Giver, Giver was before that. The Giver was 93. And that, that, I bought a car on that one too, but I gained, gained no fame and no in, income from Giver. 
Really. What kind of Porsche did you buy? <laughs> it was a 1996 uh, Porsche Carrera and with a whale tail on it, air cooled. Nice. It was so nice. beautiful, and nice. it was. I bought many fancy cars since then, and I wish I had kept that particular one. one. Wow! That was the, the one. I bet you could find right. it. The end, David. I bet you could. I could. I could find it. That car is now worth as much as I paid for it in in uh, ninety nine or two thousand, whatever. Wow! It's a uh, retained its value. It was a beautiful car. Wow! All right. Do you think that Metal Gear Solid 4's ending was a fitting end for Solid Snake and Big Boss? We may never know. <laughs> now that's a clip. <laughs> that's a cliffhanger. That's a cliffhanger. Good answer. He's thinking no, about it. He's thinking it over. Oh, okay. We'll give him the one. I'm hoping everybody comes back. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm back. Let me tell you something okay. about Metal Gear Solid 4's ending. Metal Gear Solid. And this goes to ending. Debbie Mae West. All right. <laughs> I spent four games chasing Meryl around, saving her. <laughs> ass time and again and when i get accelerated aging and i'm 40 years old but i look 75 she goes off and marries johnny sasaki the diarrhea kid so, <laughs> well and, and, and i get to go back to my ranch and die so uh was it a fitting ending uh for me maybe for for debbie absolutely not <laughs> i concur and i'm no I rookie I, david you're no rookie anymore but <laughs> the diarrhea but, kid but, is. but damn johnny sasaki i couldn't believe it i had to, i had to go back to my damn ranch with Otacon and die <laughs> hey now what's wrong with that well listen on 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 a few levels it's fine i but, understand uh, it's not as much fun as would be no well i wouldn't i wouldn't have any idea <laughs> All right, well, David. Why do you think? Why do you think that is Metal Gear Solid Two, Metal Gear Solid Two, especially appealed to so many gamers worldwide? Metal Gear Solid Two. Um, I don't know. Uh, it was my least favorite of the games because I wasn't the lead uh, player character for for most of it. Um, um, so that's honest, I, at least. Yeah. So I would. So I would say that that if it is very popular with with certain segments of the audience that they're incorrect well, they're, they're fan <laughs> questions someone else whoever asked that question that's a yeah, very charming way these are, no. No. these are not no, sorry i, got, I do sorry get a lot of i do get a lot of i do get a lot of fans uh telling me that they love metal gear 2 and um it's not my favorite but it is it is an astounding game in its own right so I'm just being cantankerous because my internet is body. Understood. Well, before we leave you to the next person, I've got a couple of quick, well, if you want them to be quick answers. Uh, there, One was, uh, who was the best villain? Liquid Snake, Solidus Snake, uh, Ocelot, or, and the other one's crossed off. I'm sorry, I can't read it. Vulgan? I have to say, it. Uh, you know, I've got Liquid Snake and I've got Ocelot here, and they, I... There's a reason why those characters were combined. Yes, brother, I see you. Um, and there's a reason why Liquid became a disembodied elbow uh, attached to the body of of uh, Revolver Ocelot. So I would say I would say Liquid it did it did happen. I would say Liquid Snake and Revolver Ocelot were 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 two of the well two of the standout villains. But we also have Sniper Wolf. Who, mm -hmm. Sniper hello, Wolf. Hello. Look, credit for what villainess is, is due. Hello. Oh yeah. my God! And and she and, solid and, and, loves all his villains the same. Let's just go with true. that. It's true. But but uh, Sniper Wolf in particular did have an amazing backstory. She was Kurdish. She was born on a battlefield. Had this amazing thing, and really was not in it for a huge amount of time, given how long Metal Gear has been going. And yet, everybody remembers that death scene between me and her and Christopher. Yeah, uh, you know, Otacon. I mean, it's one of the most impactful things. And then, oh, and then, and then, Lori Allen as the as the boss also has probably the other greatest death scene in the history of video games. And and, it, and again, one of the one of the greatest uh, uh, characters uh, developed ever. So 
very, very difficult to choose. Uh, it's like choosing one your children one. who you love more. Don't, yeah, don't. It's like choosing. Them. It's like choosing which children you loved killing more. And, <laughs> right. And All right. that's hard to do. And then we'll do. If Metal Gear Solid One was a 2020 game, would Snake still be smoking? Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, He'd I would be assume vaping. That would be a, he probably, probably <laughs> then the question is, what would he be smoking? Yeah, what would he be smoking? I kept, I kept my, uh, my vaporizer in my stomach uh, when I snuck into the base. Uh, if, like, I, you probably, if most people probably don't remember, but, but Snakes put his cigarettes in a plastic bag and smuggled them in in his stomach. So, and then I don't know how he would treat them. Did you poop them out? Yeah, I think he pooped them out and then yeah. smoked them up. Wonderful. Okay. Precious. Do you hide okay. in cardboard boxes in your spare time? <laughs> Doesn't everyone? <laughs> Listen, Christmas was a good time for me. I, I couldn't be found. No one could find me around the house. And on that, on, on that oh, note. It's just about the shipping boxes for Dave. <laughs> that's right. And on that note, the last question is, does Snake still believe in Santa? It's real, I tell you. They track him. Listen, they track him on NORAD. They wouldn't do that if he didn't exist. So I'm tired of these rumors. That's that's clearly some propaganda put out by the Patriots. The man is real. He's a true soldier. He's got a, he's got a weight pro problem, but he's he's a good man. We're working on that. <laughs> All right. We're going to move over to Tasia. Hello. Tasia. Sniper Wolf is probably the most iconic female villain in the series, yet her death was one of the saddest moments in gaming history. Did you watch or play that scene and how did you feel about it? So this was one of those fun facts of, uh, I did it. It was, you know, a great acting experience. I loved it. Uh, I didn't know much about the game because of the lack of social media until Dave uh, presented the fact that they wanted to, to do it on PlayStation and was again, so gracious uh, to make it happen in a way that wouldn't have happened because they, they, uh, this is a story that he doesn't tell, but can I tell the story, Dave, about you? It's, what does it, that, it, he was, sure. he was so gracious. I, I won't I'll just say, he, I didn't know that PlayStation was going, but look, that's a side story. I don't want to make it long. So I didn't know that it even was a, a big successful game until uh, Dave said, you know, video games are becoming bigger than movies. Uh, it's huge. And then I was like, really, that's so cool. But I didn't get to see the death scene until I got to Twitter because I never got a, a PlayStation <laughs> at the time. And so when I saw it 20 years later and I cried watching it as a viewer, I was like, wow, that's cool. Because I, I had no clue uh, the impact that it made because I, I'd actually never seen it. So to be a viewer and because of social media, uh, it, it was uh, it was very impactful, and I can see um, why it's so moving because you really did you did really understand the pain and sorrow of this woman, and why she felt the way she did, and why she uh, you know saw the world in that way, and and it was quite heroic in 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 that background. So it was it was an honor to see it. But anyway, it was a long tangent. But I I, I will say social media is the reason I got to enjoy it. You just brought up something I just have to touch on for just a second. I have to do a shout out. I don't, people out there, like we who know Dave know this, but fans may not recognize Dave. Sorry, you're gonna have to hide in your jacket. He's one of the most- Or in the box. He, generous. Yeah, in a box. He's Beautiful. one of the most generous, kind, open-hearted, <laughs> brilliant people I've ever known. And I'm grateful to be his friend. Yeah. Hello. Second. Yeah. That's very kind. Yes, very and, and, and very modest and I and again gracious like you know just always being like a there like this this happened because of who David <laughs> this is yeah. like, David was right. the one with Jeff and they got together and collaborated to bring us so shout out to you along with and that. if you ever have um, the pleasure of uh, joining him in a sauna it's amazing the things <laughs> that he can do I have not I have not yeah. that was that was me quite next, a day me next that was, that was quite a day <laughs> about the base yeah you really missed it out Lord Clark Tasia as as a player you realize that Sniper Wolf was heavily addicted to tranquilizer tranquilizers that gave her the calm hand is a strong message against drug abuse still important in 2020 especially in games 
<laughs> before she says anything, let me clarify. Please. Go for you, it. You can, as Snake, you take a Valium to steady your hands to to um, to fire the sniper shot properly. And I believe that Sniper Wolf also took Valium to do that. I don't know that she was addicted. Uh, I, I, I've never heard that before. I know so. that. I, I know, she could quit whenever she wants. She could stop whenever she wanted. She just didn't want to. Right. It um, was diazepam, though, not Valium, or is that the same thing? It's the same yeah. thing. Well, this is you doctor. What do you, have, what do you have a lab coat for? It makes sense now why she was so cool and calm and she was just checked out. But uh, I think it was marzipan. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> marzipan would be my drug of choice. Yeah. Definitely say that uh, that if she was going to do something, it would be more natural uh, and something that would be like a you know neurogenesis, like maybe something. Yeah, valerian root or maybe something of a like groom uh, to give her some clarity. But, uh, but <laughs> No, I think yes. Uh, ketamine. That's an, uh, an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know that I I can speak for her because again we serve the characters and if the characters are doing what they do, that's that's something that I I I cannot judge. And on a closing note, in a in a possible 2020 Metal Gear Solid reboot, would Sniper Wolf wear something warmer around her upper body? Not if the animators have their way. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to say that there might be even less, but uh, but you know she's a wolf. She's kind of probably you know she's just used to the cold. So I'm, I'd I'd like to think that you know she might have her uh, faux fur on, but uh, given how Oof. how the video games work, I'm going to assume it would be. I mean, the, just the drawings alone, they're always like tight. So um, no. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, moving on to Josh. You're next here. All right. uh, Josh, did you, uh, let's see, why did Ocelot choose revolvers as guns? Um, probably uh, his, I mean, if you, if you look at his cockiness and, and uh, I, I think he said that it was a weapon with honor, um, that, uh, that this is, this is what you get, you get your shots. And, and uh, I, I think, I think it's probably his cockiness that, that lends him to choose those weapons because it's not something that you can quickly reload. You got to place your shots. Everything's got to be, nothing can be wasted. Everything has to find its mark. Everything has to be perfect. And uh, as somebody who, who, who thinks himself to be pretty darn perfect and, and is super cocky about everything he does, I think that it, it would mean more to him to, to defeat, uh, to vanquish an enemy using, using one of these, I guess, weapons of old. Um, and, and not only that, I mean, he, he also seems to, you know, with, with the, with the belts and everything, he seems to really kind of get into the whole gunslinger, whole gunslinger mentality. I'm, I'm sure that, um, he probably watched Westerns and that's probably, uh, one of the, one of the big reasons that, that, uh, you know, or, or probably, probably where he got a lot of his, uh, his aesthetic. I mean, I, I, I would think that that's, that's probably what he watched in, in, uh, in Russia growing up. Okay. Now. You That's just my head cannon in terms of like that. I don't think that uh, Ko Kojima ever touched upon that. So now you had to play. You had to play off the performance of Patrick Zimmerman, who did a fantastic and over-the-top performance for the mastermind behind it all. Yes. But you played his way younger, arrogant, and insecure version. Yes. Did you use Patrick's performance in any way to get pointers, or did you do your own thing? I did my own thing because I, I hadn't played Metal Gear Solid one when I did um, or or two when I when I did this I, I went into uh, and Metal Gear Solid three knowing very little about about the series uh, knowing very little about any of it so um, I was really just trusting Chris Zimmerman Salter our our, um, our our voice director who just kept kind of telling me to turn up the cocky dial um, if that's something uh, I guess it is now. Um, but yeah, she just, she just kept saying, no, cockier, cockier, cockier. And, and that's, that's what, uh, what came out. And, uh, on the last one before we move on is, uh, the fan wants to know how is it to be a triple agent and work for CIA, KGB and the Patriots at the same time? It gets really confusing, but, uh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right, Cam. Did Clark. I win? Did I win? Yes, you won the grand prize. You get fan questions. All right. Liquid's voice is very snarky and arrogant compared to Liquid's voice in the Japanese dub. Huh. It sounds more like huh. a typical anime villain 
in Japanese dub? Was it a creative decision on your part or was someone else behind that? Is there a right and wrong answer here? Is there <laughs> multiple choice? Uh, Pick C. I go with all of the above. <laughs> um, it was me trying out various kinds of villainy things. And Chris, again, we uh, all roads all roads lead back to Chris. Uh, we went for Arch. And of course, we all know that the, the archest of villains are British. It's, it's just written in the stars. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I knew nothing about the game beforehand. So there was nothing to, for me to work off of or bounce off of. It was just uh, something we came up with at the audition. Okay. Did you ever ask yourself why Snake never noticed you were liquid in disguise as Miller? Wow. <laughs> Anybody want to answer that? David, you want to answer that for me? Yeah, it was because of his damn sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, the sunglasses. That's <laughs> right. Sunglasses. How do you like wearing... my how do you like my sunglasses, brother? Do you like my did you like my sunglasses, yeah. brother? That is one of the lines that most it's one of the top two lines that people ask to be written on their autographs is about the sunglasses. As 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 Clark Kent proved, you put on glasses. Nobody can recognize you. Nobody knows you. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's like an it's elephant standing little... behind a tree. That's right. It's a perfect disguise. <laughs> well, Cam, on that note, what did you think when you realized that you were voicing an arm in Metal Gear Solid 2? Oh, my God. We don't have enough time to go into the circus <laughs> event much that there was about Pat and me because the way it played out in uh, the the... Japanese version, the actor that played Liquid did it. Um, and there was this grassroots fan storm the castle thing uh, to get it switched, which I had uh, nothing to do with. In fact, I think Chris and I don't know who else had to, they went online to say, cease and desist this is how it's going the guy who did it in japan did it because the other actor had passed away um so it was just crazy i got fan i went i went fans do not i say to them you know not knowing anything about anything and i just went talk i don't know what you're talking about talk to the producers if you have any talk to the management if you have any complaints and so i'd get fans going all right what do you want us to do and i'm going i don't want you to do anything just just go with the flow. But yeah, they I, did not. They did not bring back Cam to play his disembodied elbow, which was uh, a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had tennis elbow at the time. <laughs> it see, was perfect. So, uh, you were. Uh, it was the role you were born to play. <laughs> sense will, memory. Sense to, memory. Very important. I do have to share that. I there were two things that let me know that this character was somebody that people love to hate. One, I was on a cruise ship of the Baltic that many years ago and at, seated at our assigned table. You know, you this go around. This is in real life, not the game, correct? Oh, yeah, this is, this is real life. And yeah, Cam is on a, on a cruise ship before I was made Lord. Yes. And uh, sitting at, you know, your assigned tables and you talk to the other people and what do you do? What do you do? Oh, I do voiceovers. Do you ever play video games? Well, yeah, 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 says this teenage boy from Germany, actually from Germany. And I said, something called, it's like metal, what is it? Metal Gear Solid, I don't know what the, and it was like, are you kidding me? I'm having dinner with Liquid. So I knew then it was hit. Also, when someone took my recording of I Will Survive, that I did for an album, and animated Liquid Snake singing this and if you have not checked this out oh uh, that's fantastic you, you've yeah. got clip now yeah, yeah. Insert insert right? clip right? now be, jeff put that in put that in i have it had, there's hilarious a... have any of you seen that no, no. i've never no. Seen, oh seen i know but what i'm gonna watch after this for a second uh, there's testing a one two three snake and the boss where somebody put on youtube and it's just our fighting sounds so it's just a great, it's like, uh, mm, oh, I mean, it just, it's, <laughs> I think a lot of people know that in video games, it sounds like we're either constipated or having sex. So complete magic. In real life, we're having constipation for me. 
So it's, it's like uh, a combo. All <laughs> right, Cam. The rivalry over decades between Solid and Liquid is probably the biggest in gaming, close to Mario and Bowser. What <laughs> character could defeat Solid Snake, in your opinion? From 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 where from anywhere in the universe? Anywhere in the universe. Elsa from Frozen. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, she's got powers. She does too. Leonardo of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> How's that for a shameless plug? Let's go with that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Roy Campbell is a direct reference to Colonel Troutman from Rambo movies. Did Richard Crenna's performance influence yours in any way? In no way whatsoever. Um, oh. Sorry. Uh, I, because I didn't realize that at the, at the time. Okay, that's fair. Um, he was terrific, but it had nothing to do with my performance. Now, they, someone asked, what's your codec frequency again? Uh, 140. Uh, point, uh, is it 0.85? Am I right, Snake? Uh, I, uh, that sounds pretty close. I, I'm pretty close. Great one. Nice. Wow, that's very that's, good. All right. Right. Did you just give out your phone number by accident? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on every bathroom wall around town. Oh, oh, oh I get it. <laughs> Mail and yeah. up in that. Another, another fan asked, uh, how did you do the robotic voice at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2 when it was revealed to the player that you wow. were an evil AI? Uh, that, well, a lot of that was done in, in, in post. In post. I wish I could take credit for all of it, but uh, I had help. When uh, it's revealed that he is an AI, and he goes off and says all these weird things, you know, and he says there's 61. Uh, Chris uh, Zimmerman's assaulter uh, didn't tell me what was going on until near the end. And at the last day, she gave me this last day of this sheet of all these different things where he does all the the train stations and, and the Japanese and the Lali Lulu, Lali Lulu, all of that stuff the last day. And, and when I asked her, I said, what does all this mean? She said, Doesn't, don't worry about it. It'll come, it'll come clear later. So I knew something was up, but I wasn't exactly sure that I was a, uh, an AI until that time. She was, she was very good about that, you know, messing with your mind a little bit. Um, okay. The next follow up to that is in hindsight, would you agree that many of the themes in the 2001 Metal Gear Solid 2, like the control of the news and information in the digital age or AI programs become reality in 2020? <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing and it's frightening uh, how on the nose he was uh, in a lot of ways. I've been asked to read that um, more than once, uh, either in cameos or you know, just you know, people con contact me and say, could you read this and put it on Twitter? And I read part of it, and it is uh, it's kind of freaky how he saw what was coming. Uh, I suppose anybody, if you really thought about it, you could see the uh, overabundance of information, media, social media. Where we believe are flying cars? <laughs> and now have any, flying cars by now yeah but nobody knows what what's true or, or people can say no one knows what's true because my truth is not your truth and there's so much out there um and in a lot of ways that's one of the problems we're in right now uh there's so much out there and people aren't um they aren't filtering they're just accepting everything. Understood. Okay. And, and the last question, why couldn't Campbell as a higher up military in Metal Gear Solid 1 provide Snake with weapons at the start of the game? It could have been so much easier. He's a colonel. A colonel, you know, you say high up. A colonel, I was in the military. A colonel is more than a private or a sergeant, you know, but he's still just a freaking colonel. There, you know, there's a full bird colonel. There's four generals above him. 
So he, he, he has power, but he has also been just been uh, out of retirement. Uh, there are ways that he has to prove himself as well. Gotcha. We didn't have as much. I, I, I had to scuba dive in there. I, I'm not sure how many weapons I could carry with me. Yeah. I already, I already had my cigarettes in my intestinal tract. In your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So wasn't, Put an M14 know, up somewhere. That was well, just. Thank you very of, much, Paul. All right. Last but not least, Laurie. Laurie Allen. How are you? Laurie Allen. I like the way you say Laurie. My wow. mom says, my mom says Laurie because she's Southern. My dad says Laurie. He goes, she, she goes, it's not Lori and it's not Laurie, but I like it when you say that because it reminds me of my mom who's from the South. I'm Jewish and Southern Baptist. So Laurie makes me think of my mom. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to help in anything I can do for you. All right. When the boss was introduced to the players as a mentor, it immediately felt like she in some way in some way is a mother to snake was that idea part of how you approach this character um how i approached her probably uh i think that just probably came out in the writing and perhaps part of my audition or or whatnot but i just knew if she's a mentor she she always sees the mission as larger than the personality or anything like that the mission is always first um, so I think she's like a mother to everyone. She is like the eternal, you know, she's, she's really the mother to all. So I think that, um, because she always puts the mission first, um, I hope that, 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 that helps to, to get some insight into her, that, that nothing is more important. As David reminded me, you know, she's the greatest soldier in American history. She is a mother. She is a mother. She's a bad mother. You know what? So. <laughs> I, I think also that, that also came from because i was playing young uh young big boss before he was big boss and he was clearly in awe of the boss and and had learned everything from her so i think part of my obsequious uh response to her added to that mother-son dynamic yeah mother-son lover soldier mentor yeah although yeah lover soldier enemy frenemy also was was woven in there it was a pretty it's a pretty we fun to dynamic to play. Well, on that note, the next question was, the boss is one of the best written female characters in gaming history. How would you rate her? Is she in the same league as Ellie from The Last of Us? Um, I think she's, I, again, all the women in this this game, I, they're, it's, it's extraordinary. It's a great, it's such an amazing opportunity. I mean, she is such, um, she's such a force. And um, so I do believe that she is like, like I, when, you know, fans will write in, right? You, just, you get more, I get more, so much more insight into the character. I'm sure you guys can relate to this. When fans tell you how it affected you and what, you know, she means, she or he means to you. And it makes, it makes you cry sometimes. It's just like, they're so moved. And some of the times to be completely honest, we don't always remember because it's been a long time or that kind of thing. But, um, you know, she some of the best quotes, I mean, I actually printed some of them out. Like when she says to Snake, you know, I raised you, I loved you. I've given you weapons. I've taught you knowledge, techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There's nothing for me to do. It's like, it's, it, the writing is, is, is amazing. And she, she loves her country. She loves her, her people. So when she says that life's end is tragic and their death scene is, is so beautiful. I remember I got to see a tiny bit of it in recording and I just sat there and cried because it was just so beautiful. And I can't even imagine if that scene was, you know what I mean? If that scene was animated now, it, it, it's, it was, it's beautiful. So I just sit and watch YouTube like Tasia was saying too, and just take it in because it's, it's really extraordinary. Thank you. Uh, the, other, the other beautiful thing about and tragic thing about that scene that you don't get unless you play it is at the end, she's asking you to kill her and you have the gun and the game won't let you move on. That you just stand there looking at her until you pull the trigger, and then, you know, when you're ready to do it, you do it, and then and the game progresses. But it's really a, it's sort of a, a cruel Hideo Kojima uh, element that that goes into it. But you really take part in in killing. Because she wants you to inherit the title. So he's frozen up again. He's very, <laughs> but she wants him to inherit the title of, of the boss. And so you, like he said, you can't move forward. So it's just like, dun, dun, dun. the boss, which is yeah. very sad. 
Yeah. I'm frozen up. I think I think it's great great how a lot of people have talked about um, getting emotional over the game. There are so many beautiful uh, moments throughout the series, and you know it's coming from Kojima, who says I think he says it's like eighty or ninety percent. 90% men of, uh, made of movies or something. Mm. Um, uh, but I remember uh, when I, because a lot of the times when we got this, when we went to record, uh, we're getting the scripts on the spot. So you're finding out all this information as you're reading it. And part of our job is to be good cold readers. And I found myself learning about uh, Kaz's history. He has his monologue where he talks about his history and how his father committed suicide. I'm in the middle of it. Uh, the studio and just found myself getting emotional. I told Chris, I got to take a break. She's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting really upset here. This is like moving me. Um, but the funny thing about it is when I finally got to meet Kojima one day and I told him that story and I thought maybe, you know, he'd, he'd get some emotion <laughs> over it too. He just went like this, smallest violin in the world play. <laughs> I think it was an ode to, again, being played like a damn fiddle. That was his. <laughs> but um, it, it is kind of beautiful how everybody's had uh, uh, similar experiences. Um, yes, a four hit me with uh, a wed uh, Meryl's wedding. It's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Meryl pulls the gun. Is, is she, are, are, what's our relationship going to be going forward? Or will there be a relationship? Or will she just shoot me? You know? <laughs> you know? Good All right, Laurie, at the yeah. beginning of Metal Gear Solid 3's virtuous mission, there is a nearly 20-minute codec conversation between the boss and Naked Snake. Was that dialogue recorded in one session? Um, I believe so. I remember having a session that was, I, I so oh. relate to when Robin was saying I had to, I had to step out on a couple of, of occasions. It was so intense. Um, but I believe that was the, one of the longest record sessions I had um, and, and emotional too. So again, it just, we all have such gratitude for Chris, our, our mm. voice director, who is just basically your scene partner, you know, when we had, when we weren't recording together. So um, yeah, I, I think that, I think that's accurate. Excellent. All right. This one I'm going to throw out to the group. We don't have, we can, I'll, I'll put a small time limit on it. <laughs> we have uh, just generic questions and go to anybody. How has voice acting changed today when compared to 1998? Oh my God. There's I was a lot younger. of people doing First thing I said. <laughs> Other than your age. <laughs> well, we're, oh, we're oh, not wow. in a house somewhere. We actually get to be in real studios um, most of the time. COVID, I mean, Not anymore. Well, now with COVID, we're kind of <laughs> back. We're in our well, own yeah, now house. we're in our own. Yeah. We're in our own. Wow, house. it's really yeah. changed this year. Absolutely. Yeah, this, this I think uh, Dave nailed it earlier. I oh, think sorry, Dan. with the evolution of, um, you know, the evolution of the tech side of the visuals and stuff, um, that has allowed us to move from a more, you know, kind of put on acting style to a true filmic zone where thought registers on the mic. Like that's been an amazing change. And to be able to do that is, it's fantastic because we get to have a real experience. And when we do that, then the people playing the game do. Don't you think the microphone kind of, uh, because things are more cinematic, it's like if you were in a game and I, I coach people a lot and I say, just the person's right there. If it's a gaming thing, the yeah. person's right there. Um, even if you are stressed out and you have, you know, five seconds to record an audition and it's in the middle of all this craziness, even the microphone, just knowing that there's somebody on the other end and then the microphone really ca captures like your performance. It captures the feeling, it captures what's going on. And it's much more, um, it's much more dynamic, real life, high stakes situation. It's not animation, it's not cartoon, right? The stakes are high as an actor, it's wonderful. It's changed one of the biggest pieces of focus you're not allowed to get away with how anymore. How do I do this? You really have to stay with who am I talking to? What do I want? What just happened? Not around. It's like it's your because it's, it's acting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Games also used to be a lot more linear in that you know you had you had your lines and that was it. And now mm -hmm you don't just have those lines, you have situations that have to take into account what the player is going to do. So 
you might play the same scene five different ways because you have to account for five different choices that they might make that all have to have just a slightly altered performance or maybe a really altered performance. And so um, there, there's a lot more work for us to do for the same type of a game because now with the advent of, um, of the technology comes the advent of choice. Not, not everything is so linear where it's really just, you know, uh, play this level, get this cinema scene, play this level, get this cinema scene. There's, there's so much more of the player's um, interaction that has to be accounted for. So that's, that, I think, is another big change um, from back in, in this time. All right. What makes Metal Gear Solid so special compared to other games? Are there any other gamers that just or people that have done other games that would say Metal Gear Solid is special because of this? Well, when it first started out, uh, you know, he was one of the first people to really implement the stealth way of playing. Like back then, people used to just going, just blowing everything away. And I remember the first time I played, I got, it was very frustrating. I'm like, what do you mean? I've got to just crawl under this box or hang out? to wait to take this guy out. And then other games came out like Hitman and everybody sort of, you know, Kojima kind of innovated a lot of different uh, things in games, the cinematic structure, but I would say stealth. I think, the I think also that the relationships that were created, yeah. was that what you're about to say? Yeah. I, the I, know, I, I feel that um, on a, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I, my, I, I've never played a video game ever, and um, but I've met so many people in my travels that, you know, when I tell them I was in Metal Gear Solid, they freak out and the Metal Gear series. I mean, really, literally, I was in a, I was in a, an airport in Florida many, many years ago, and all these young boys were coming home from duty, and I don't even know how we got into the conversation, but it, they, they were just completely amazed at, at that I was Meryl Silverberg and, and it's happened very, you know, many, many times. And I would say of all, you know, I've, I've done a lot of video games. I don't do a lot of them anymore, but she is the most iconic character I've ever played. And I feel like really feel famous in some way because of her. But I think the relationships that were created in, in the very first one and the way that we recorded them as Jennifer spoke of earlier, like, I've only done one other session ever on a video game where I got to be in the room with other people. Cartoons, yes, but video games, no. And and I think that whether it was intentional or not on, on Mr. Kojima's part, what came comes through is that these characters are are real and our relationships are real. And and I think that somehow even um, on a level that maybe most of the players don't even realize that it seeps in because of the reality of the relationships. It has them feel more connected to us as people, not, and not just like some animated character. And, and so I think this game still, it's crazy. Like David said, it's how many years later, 22 years later, here we are and people still want to watch this. <laughs> Talk and also, lost. can I throw in the fact that, and David is introduced to me, Jordan Vote Roberts, who's trying to make, bring this to, this to the screen, is a director who's like really kind of brought it back to the forefront of everyone's attention because he's so passionate about it. And it's, it's, I think that speaks to the fact that he loves it because of his childhood experience with it. And now here he is 22 years later, a director who's now taking his passionate uh, feeling about what his experience was and wanting him to bring it to the screen. So- Are uh, we gonna be in it? I was just gonna say, I hope we all have cameos. Cameos, yeah. 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 I think we're the all voices on the bridge. Right. That would be super cool if we're all just like walking by in a fur coat, a la Stallone. Right. And, uh, <laughs> 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 I love fur coat, faux fur coat, faux, faux. David, faux you look fur. so yeah. pensive. Yeah, Dave, are you frozen? He's or are relaxed, you, uh, he's focused. David's focused. I think he's just frozen. He's frozen. Oh, no, <laughs> Dave, come back because we need you. You look so interested, Master David. Of stillness. We're wrapping up right now, so we okay. need you for the finale, David. Hey, Jeff. You know what I was going to say? We're you, uh, such great questions from everybody, from our from our fabulous fans about you know women in games and what's so nice is I know all four one you know, four of us um, have had you know people are like I admire her, I want to be her, you know, because they're strong women who have been through stuff. And same, obviously, for the male characters. Um, like I wish you know, I mean, everyone's like, I was like, I wish I could be her, you know? So I think that's something that um, I'm really proud to have, to have been part of this. It's sort of, it's very humbling, Too. you know, it's very like, ooh, gulp. Thanks, you know? I wish I could be her. Look at her. <laughs> so you know, jumping back, um, 
two, um, one of the first questions was how things have changed from the beginning. When I first started doing video games, uh, before, I did a few before Metal Gear. And often I would be the only actor. I'd be doing it, uh, uh, game developers and some of the guys who worked on the games would be doing supplying the voices. Um, and God bless them, they're wonderful with what they do. The artists and the creators, I mean, I couldn't touch them. But as voice actors, they were dreadful. Uh, so what for me has changed is, and I think I don't want to pat everybody on the back, but I got to. Another reason why Metal Gear works so well is the writing. It always starts with the word, no question about it. And it, it, it also goes with the casting, whoever the casting director is. And again, it's, uh, it's Salter. Chris yes. Salter Please. shows this group of yes, people. And these actors yes, are pretty fucking good. They're not wow. just voices. They're not just voice actors. They are actors who know how to use their voice, know how to use a microphone. Right. And I really believe that's a lot of why this this uh, this game was changed the way things uh, work. Um, so now most games, I'm sure there are a lot of games that are still uh, I don't want to non-union or whatever. Uh, but the quality of actor has changed over the years, and I'm really proud to have been part of this this group. Yeah, I I, I would second that, and I also think that the the, the reason it, I mean, that it plays off of each other because the reason that Chris, who I believe was the casting person, was able to get oh, some yeah. good actors was that the writing allowed space for the actors to really play. There was stuff yeah. to play. You know, there were emotions. And uh, I mean, we go back to the Sniper Wolf death scene i mean you learn about her pain you learn about otacon's pain you learn a, a more about snake's pain and you also get this giant thematic moment of like what are we fighting for and that's all in one scene and that's just really good writing and good yeah. actors know good writing Great right. And and I remember know, gravitate this. towards it whenever they can find it, you know. I remember the casting process. I remember Christopher, you and I were in class together. Yes, no, I you know, I wouldn't I be here if it were somebody. not for Jennifer Hale, no. who who basically said, you know, she like leaned across a chair in a, in the acting class we were in and said, you know, the the there's this this voice class. You want to go take it, and and I did. And Chris Zimmerman was one of the teachers, <clears throat> and then it things progressed from there. So. We should send her flowers from all of us. I Seriously. know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 We're talking that. about her. Truly, truly. Joint from 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 the team. All right. Well, yeah, okay. I want to say thank you guys for everything you've done, and obviously it shows. It, it's a true test of how how good you are at what you do. That this. This game has been it, it is still one of the biggest games in the world this many mm. years later so from the fan point of view and from all the fans that wrote in all these questions thank you for what you do um it truly is a, a test of time and, and and it was an amazing job because i hear about it all the time well on our way out what i think the fans really want to hear the most <clears throat> is you guys whatever line you want in your character voice if you're okay with that and we're just gonna i'm gonna go around the horn and just do whatever line you want to do. And that's going to be our sign off. So I want to say it was been an honor. Uh, my, my name again, Jeff Zanini. I'm your host, Celebrity Talent Booking and Twisted Tunes. Uh, let's start. Let's go right around the way here. Let's start with Christopher. Whatever your most famous line or whatever you're known for, whatever fans ask for, just shoot out a line in your voice. Do you think love can bloom on a battlefield? <laughs> Jennifer. Snake. Snake! <laughs> Robin. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Every night I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. 
the body I've lost, the comrades I've lost, won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm gonna make them give back our past. I just found that online. I had to look it up. <laughs> I don't have it memorized. I was gonna say you had that memorized. <laughs> I was just good. like found wow. it like Kaz's yeah. greatest line, but I do love that. that. All line right, right there. Next up, Laurie. I raised you. I loved you. I've given you weapons. I've taught you techniques. Endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you is to take my life by your hand. One must live and one must die. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight and the one who inherits the title of the boss will face an existence of endless battle. Wow, Josh. All right. Um, this bitch is wearing perfume. And also, wow. <laughs> everybody always asks for the ocelot meow <laughs> all right paul uh in honor of uh, the only snake in my estimation uh his least favorite game i hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in flap jaw space with a tuning fork does a raw blink on harry carry rock i need scissors 61 <laughs> debbie you're a real bastard, just like my uncle said. Is that you, the real snake, solid snake? La le li lo lu. <laughs> All right, Cam. Well, mine was rather difficult to memorize. It sounded something like this. Snake! <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Asia. I was born on the battlefield. Raised on the battlefield, gunfire, sirens, and screams. They were my lullabies. Wow, and last. Uh, I'm but... still in love with her. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> her. Her, last like... but not least, Snake himself, David. Just remember, a strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. Very there nice. We have it. Hey, what about Jennifer? Jennifer, did you do one? Yeah. I yes. Yes. Oh, I missed yes. it. It's similar thing. to mine. I didn't search. Oh, the... yes. Sorry. I Metal Gear Solid. Thank you, fans. You're welcome. Thank you, fans. Oh, thank for you our friends. panelists. Thank you. Thank have you. a Good great day, everybody. 2021's Happy a New better year. year. We're yes. nothing without Thanks the fans. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, are... Everything. Thank you, fans, for making us uh, so, uh, you know, coming together and that we can be here for you because it really is about the fans that we are here. And it's am amazing to be able to come back and hopefully uh, get to meet you all in person in 2021. <laughs> yeah. We mop the God's ear. Right. Remember, in be 2021, well, don't get yeah. played like a damn fiddle. That's right. <laughs>